Hi everyone. In this video we're going to cover subtopic 1.3 on volumetric analysis. Volumetric analysis is a quantitative analysis involving the measurement of volumes of different reacting solutions. We often use it to determine the amount of, or the concentration of particular substances, usually in solution. So for an, uh, an example, we can consider the amount of chlorine in a swimming pool. We can be looking at sulfur dioxide concentration in wine, or even vitamin C content in orange juice. A technique that we use, called a titration, uh, is something we use to carry out volumetric analysis. And it's something that you should be familiar with from stage one chemistry. This then links into the first science understanding. Concentrations can be described by using a number of standard conventions. You need to know how to uh, calculate concentration and interconvert units uh, consisting of things like moles per litre, grams per litre, percentage weight volume, parts per million and parts per billion. And also know how to apply SI prefix conventions to quantities. Let's go back uh, to stage one chemistry. Let's talk about what concentration means again. So we can define it as the amount of a solute, something that uh, effectively dissolves. And this could be as a mass or moles in a given volume of solution, usually in mils or liters. Uh, we can therefore express concentration as a mass or a molar concentration. Starting off with, I guess, the most common one is molar concentration. So you might remember this from um, stage one chemistry, how uh, we looked at the molar concentration being equal to the number of moles uh, divided by the volume. We've got the units for all the necessary components here. We've got a formula to work out molar concentration denoted by C. And we also have a triangle that you can use to solve for any of these particular um, factors here, uh, given the data of the other two. Alternatively, we could be looking at mass concentration. So this is just the amount of a substance in grams, often per a unit volume, in this case, often is liters. Uh, we use the symbol rho here to represent uh, mass concentration instead of C, uh, which is given as grams per liter or grams times liters to the minus one. We've got our formula here for mass concentration and we've got another triangle we can use to solve for any of these things. We can see mass concentrations being used commercially. So we've got a, a picture and a zoomed up picture of some bleach here. So we can see that we have an active ingredient, which is sodium hypochlorite, um, which is given as 42 grams per litre. Uh, so that being the mass concentration of it. Uh, also, we can see that sodium hydroxide, so a base, is also contained within this bleach, and that's given as a concentration of nine grams per liter. We can also see some percentages being used, so that's what we're going to talk about next. So percent or percentage weight per volume, well, we can often see it in the pharmaceutical industry as well as different commercial products. It, by definition, uh, represents the number of grams of solute per 100 ml of solution and we've got a formula given as such here. So it's equal to the mass of a solute in grams divided by the volume of solution in mils, and then we multiply it by 100 to convert it into a percentage. And then that gives us uh, these uh, appropriate units for percentage weight per volume. This uh, is an image of a sore throat gargle. So if ever you suffer from a sore throat, I definitely recommend that you actually try this. It definitely works wonders for me. Um, and we can see here the active ingredient is povidone iodine and it uh, has a concentration of 7.5% weight per volume. So that tells us that we have 7.5 grams of povidone iodine per 100 mils of this sore throat gargle. We can look at other percentages. So in this case, we've got percentage weight per weight. So it's where we're looking at the mass of the solute in grams and also we're looking at the mass of the, the mixture or the solution in grams. So it's the number of grams of solute per 100 grams of mixture. The formula looks very, very similar as you can see here. We also have percentage volume per, uh, per volume, which is for liquid solutions. So often dealing with liquid solutes and liquid solvents. And so that would represent the volume in mils of solute per 100 mils of solution. 
but effectively each of these representations will be a percentage of some sorts. Uh, looking now at uh, some Voltaren Emugel, which often is needed for pain relief, if we look at the label here, we can see that we have a concentration, so to speak, of 1% weight per weight of this uh, diclofenac diethyl ammonium gel. Two more units we're going to talk about, also mass concentration units. Uh, firstly, parts per million. These are often used to represent very, very low concentrations. Examples consist of carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere, as you might recall from 1.1, or dissolved minerals or pollutants in large bodies of water. So parts per million represents the mass of a solute often measured in milligrams that is present in one kilogram of solution. The unit's parts per million can be defined as milligrams per kilogram or milligrams times kilograms to the minus one. One thing we should just keep in mind is that one kilogram is effectively one million milligrams. So if we have one million milligrams of a, a solution or of a mixture, we want to determine how many of those milligrams or how much of those milligrams is consisting of our solute. Hence, we have this definition um, milligrams per kilogram, which we say is equivalent to parts per million. If we are talking about solutions and in particular dilute solutions, this is true, that milligrams per kilogram is equivalent to milligrams per litre. And we have to keep in mind that solutions, we usually use litres as a form of measurement. Finally, parts per billion. Uh, so this is for even more extremely low concentrations, uh, an example being contaminants in soil or large bodies of water. Because we're looking at much more uh, minute amounts of solute, we measure them in micrograms, so it's the mass of a solute in micrograms present again in one kilogram of solution, which we can equate as well to one litre of solution. Um, so for dilute aqueous solutions, the unit's micrograms per kilogram is equivalent to micrograms per litre, and we can also say that it's represented as parts per billion. If we want to be able to convert between different concentration units and in stage two chemistry we would expect uh, that you can actually do this then one thing you may find useful is this uh, flow chart so to speak um, you can essentially follow this chart and it will tell you how you can actually convert from one set of units to another so over to the left side we have the only molar concentration units here which is moles per liter to convert it to grams per liter we can multiply it by the molar mass. To convert it back, we can just simply inverse that. And if we were, say, at grams per litre, and we wanted to convert to milligrams per litre, then we would need to multiply by 10 to the power of 3 or 1,000. And you can just follow this along and work out um, the resulting concentration you need to. Now, in regards to SI prefixes, we can often represent units using these prefixes so on, in this table here, we can see things like kilo, mega, giga, or on the smaller scale, milli, micro, nano being used to either represent very large units or very small units. Using SI prefixes and scientific notation does help simplify the representation of values. So if we had a volume of 127 billion litres, we could represent it as gigalitres and we can use also scientific notation here. So 127 billion litres we could think of as being equivalent to 1.27 times 10 squared or 10 to the power of 2 gigalitres. So there's the scientific notation but we've essentially converted litres into gigalitres and we know that 1 gigalitre is equivalent to one billion litres.